What's up guys, my name's Tyler. I'm an American expat currently living in Budapest, Hungary. The city I'd like to talk to you about today. So prior to moving here one month ago today, I knew almost nothing about this city. Here are a few things I've observed thus far. Mention Budapest anywhere in Europe and you'll likely hear about its affordability. I've found this to be true so far. For example, this apartment which I'm renting right in the center of Budapest cost me about 550 bucks a month. Now that's all in, so that includes all fees and utilities. It's a small place, a loft style studio, which you'll find a lot of here in Budapest. Now I've met some local Hungarians as well, and I've asked them what they're paying for their places. And I've learned that if you're staying for a longer period of time, you can expect to pay a little bit less for a place this size, between 350 and 400 bucks a month. Some other common expenses like public transport are also not bad at all. You can buy public transport tickets one at a time for about $1 per ride, or you can buy bundles or month-long passes which will offer you a bit of a discount. Now, as in any city, when going out for food or drinks, there's often a wide range of prices you can expect to pay. But there are definitely some really good deals here in Budapest. For example, I just went and had a lunch menu at a nearby restaurant here in the city center for four euro. That's like $4.50. At other restaurants, you can expect to pay 10 or even $15 for a plate. So they're not all extremely cheap, but there are definitely deals out there to be found. As far as beer and wine go, you can expect to pay between two and $3 for a beer, depending on the size. And I found most glasses of wine to be about $2.50 or three bucks. Not bad. Now, speaking of going out for food or drinks, I've been really pleasantly surprised to find a multitude of nightlife areas or places to go out and socialize. For example, from my apartment here in the city center, just one block to the east, there's a long pedestrian street filled with bars and restaurants that goes on for kilometers. And then two blocks to the west, there's another street like this. Both of these streets and so many others across the city are extremely pedestrian friendly. You can find just about any type of food you can think of from all around the world. There's an okonomiyaki place, which is a Japanese Osaka style pancake, just two blocks from my apartment. There are Thai restaurants, Mexican restaurants, and also a ton of tapas bars, which is something that I've really been excited to find since I'm a big fan of Spanish cuisine. And these bars and restaurants are Chili's or Applebee's. They're actually very unique, one-of-a-kind style places. For example, there's a bar called Paris, Texas across the street from my place, which I've been meaning to pop into. And of course, there's the Analog Cafe where I went to develop photos just a couple weeks ago. There are tons of places to go out and socialize here in Budapest. On the topic of cafes and places to go out and socialize, so far I've found the weather here in Budapest to be quite mild. Now I've only been here through the month of February, but there've been a lot of sunny days during this time, and the average temperature I'd say has been in the 50s Fahrenheit or around 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. I am of course looking forward to the weather warming and to spring really kicking off because I think that these bars and cafes are really going to thrive. Now I'd never been to Budapest prior to making the move, so my impression of the city has only been in winter so far. I'm sure this is by no means the most touristy season and I'm sure many more tourists will come in waves as the weather warms. However, thus far, I've been surprised to find mainly locals or international people who live in the city. Of course, on weekends, I have noticed a few more English speakers in the city, but for the most part, especially compared with Prague, Barcelona, even Vienna, other more popular tourist destinations within Europe, Budapest really feels like a place to live rather than some big tourist amusement park. And I really enjoyed that. It really seems to have an authenticity to it. As for speaking English in Budapest, I haven't really had any problems thus far. Of course, I always try to learn a few phrases in the local language, no matter where I am. So for example, I've learned Sia is hello and Kusunum is thank you. 
Small efforts like this are usually appreciated by the local people, and I've definitely found that to be the case here in Budapest. Thus far, I've had no problems in my daily life interacting entirely in English. Now, for those of you who are looking to learn more of the Hungarian language, Good luck, it's a difficult one. Prior to making the move to Budapest, I didn't do much research on the city, but I did of course search a few images on Google. In almost every single one of these images, I kept seeing the same building over and over, which was actually a little bit concerning. This building is the famous Hungarian parliament building. It's a beautiful building, very elaborate architecture, and it really stands out on the city skyline. Up until very recently, it was the tallest building in Budapest, and it has only recently been topped by a modern tower which is still under construction now. The Hungarian Parliament building is a great place to take a selfie, but it's not representative of the city as a whole. I didn't know what kind of buildings I would find amongst the streets of Budapest, but I've been pleasantly surprised to find a seemingly endless maze of architectural glory. Budapest was once one of the most thriving cities in the world. At the end of the 19th century, it was the head of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. At times, it almost reminds me of Paris, but a more authentic, more worn-in version, like a thrift shop Paris, if you will. And combined with its plethora of museums, galleries, and cafes, in many ways, Budapest feels like a hipster's dream. Now, admittedly, at times during my winter stay here in Budapest, I have felt a bit overwhelmed, a bit trapped by all of the concrete around me. But on the Buddha side of the river, the city starts to get a lot more green. In fact, whereas Pest is completely flat and mostly made of concrete, the Buddha side is filled with green hills. In fact, Elizabeth Lookout, the highest point in Budapest, which sits atop a forested green hill, is just a quick tram ride away from the center of the city. In this area, you'll find tons of trails and you could get lost in the wilderness for days. So while the city can at times feel like a concrete jungle, it's very easy to escape into a green space. Now, I haven't lived in Budapest long, just one month as of today. But so far, I've really enjoyed living in the city. I'm looking forward to see how the city evolves with the season, so stay tuned to see what I find.